Most of the time, prayer changes everything, and God has a way of bringing two people ordained for one another together. This story is about a successful and fiercely independent Mary Ann Brubeck, who adopts a baby just before Christmas. Due to the weather, she and the baby get stuck in Bethlehem for the holidays, and have to stay with a quintessential bachelor who resides in a house he treats like a barn. In the opening scene of Miracle in Bethlehem, we see a woman named Marianne, an independent and successful lawyer who's also divorced, hoping to adopt a baby. She paints a mural in the nursery of her house, hangs a cross, and smells baby clothing. As she does this, in a voiceover we hear her exchange messages with a representative named Gabriella at an adoption agency. With each message, Marianne learns she still needs to be patient to get a baby for adoption. Later, we see Marianne talking with one of her clients. She finalizes her divorce and can get the woman and son what they deserve, and does not charge her for the services rendered, revealing they deserve it, and her son deserves a good life. The client appreciates her as she leaves. After she joins her colleague and only friend Naomi at the breakfast table, she reveals the news about her ex-husband getting married to someone younger. She believes it will help her heal faster from the pain of not having a son for him and without him in the picture, she has been successful. Naomi hopes she's fine, and wants to know if there's any progress about her adopting a baby. Mary, trying to encourage herself, believes the adoption will take time, since she is a single woman. Naomi tries to encourage her and advises her to rest. She reminds her of maternity leave, and suggests she work remotely. Later at night, Mary tries to see a movie, and sees a statue of a woman carrying her baby on her table. This reminds her of how much she wants a baby. She holds the statue, and cannot see the movie again. Then she goes into the room she has decorated for the incoming baby. She reaches out to Gabriella again over the phone, to know if there's any progress with the adoption. Unfortunately, Gabriella reveals that there's no update yet, and encourages her to be patient, because the adoption process takes time. She hopes she will be able to get back to her by New Year. Mary is disappointed, because she had been expecting a positive response. After the call, she decides to pray with the statue in her hand. She prays to God for the grace to be patient, and trust him to await his divine timing for the adoption. In the next scene, we see another man named Joe in Bethlehem, who's a classic man-child. He plays video games and lounges on the couch in his suburban house with his dog. His girlfriend Brooke complains to get his attention, and hopes he can get more out of his life. She tries to encourage him, and remind him of how successful he was with his former band. She believes he can still give music another try, since he still has a room where he keeps his guitar. Joe reveals he gave up his dreams of being a musician years ago. Brooke believes he will not change, so she breaks up with him. Joe does not feel bad one bit, but continues with his game. In the next scene, Mary notices her sink is leaking in the kitchen, so she decides to fix it by herself, showing how independent she is. Joe, on the other hand, gets some sleep while playing his game. His sister joins him with his nephew. She reminds him of taking care of his nephew for the night, and she wonders where Brooke is at the moment. Joe reveals that she broke up with him. Her sister hopes he is fine, since he has experienced a lot of breakups. Although she believes Brooke is not the right woman for him. Joe's not bothered, but wishes to know how she's able to live with the same man for years. She reveals it takes God giving you the right person and hard work to love someone. Joe believes he has been working hard, but he has not found the right woman. His sister hopes he can get his passion for music right, but he is not willing to do that yet. She leaves him with her son. While Mary is fixing her leaking sink, she receives a call from her mom, who reminds her of the plan to join her for Christmas. She tries to avoid the discussion, and reveals she is fixing her sink. Even as she wishes to have a mother and daughter time with Mary, she declines to make excuses. She ends the call, hoping her mother can understand she needs time alone. After the call, she's still unable to fix her sink, and eventually gets soaked with the leaking water. So she gives up. The next day, while Joe is busy fixing a car in his father's mechanic shop, his friend who's also part of his former band joins him. He shows him the box he found in his home, which contains pictures and tickets of where they played as a band. Joe remembers his late father, who revealed he had cancer while they were on a tour to San Francisco. His friend apologizes for bringing back painful memories, but he believes he needs to hear it, so it can bring the spark he had as a musician. While he gives him the box, Joe believes the spark is long gone, and wonders if his father will be proud of him for taking over his business and his house. His friend thinks his father would be proud, but would miss him playing guitar, since he loved it when he was still alive. When his friend leaves to get his dog, Joe checks the box for some of his pictures. In the next scene at Mary's office, she receives a call from Gabriella, and she hopes it is good news. At long last, it is wonderful news. There is a baby girl up for adoption. Mary is thrilled and overwhelmed. She immediately leaves to be on her way. She meets Naomi and reveals the news to her. Naomi is excited that she will be getting a baby for Christmas. She is ready to assist her in any way, and suggests she reach out to her mother, thinking she will be of great help to her while raising the baby. Mary believes it is not a good idea, because she believes her mother will not support her adopting a baby. Naomi wishes her a safe trip. 
They hug each other happily. Finally, she gets to be a mother. Mary gets home to get some of what she will be needing for herself and the baby. While she is still in the baby room, she sees the cross she hung there, and appreciates God for answering her prayers. Joe, on the other side, goes through everything in the box his friend gave him earlier, and remembers his life as a musician. He receives a warning alarm on his phone about the blizzard that would soon begin in Bethlehem. Mary gets to the hospital, and a nurse takes her to where the baby girl is. On seeing the baby with her name tag, Mary gets emotional, and is so glad to finally be a mom. She loves her immediately. At Frankie's Inn, her husband wants to leave, believing they're through for the day. They listen to news about the incoming blizzard, and they suggest people should stay indoors till it's over. While she's trying to let her husband go home, a customer joins, and she wants her husband to stay and assist her with the visitor. At the hospital, Mary talks with Gabriella. She reveals how the couple who was supposed to adopt the baby girl declined at the last minute. Mary wonders why they would do that, but Gabriella believes adoption is a commitment. And sometimes when reality sets in people realize it entails a lot. She reveals they named the baby Natalie, which means Christmas. After their discussion, Mary plans to get back home that same night, but Gabriella suggests she gets an in, because all hotels will be fully booked, since it is a holiday. Mary still wants to find her way home. Mary drives back home, and she listens to news giving updates about the blizzard. Some roads are being closed up, but she still believes she will get home. Back at Frankie's Inn, she gets a lot of customers who want a lodge in. Her husband and son assist in getting their luggage and showing the guests their respective rooms. Mary continues to drive while the baby cries. She hopes she can get home, but the blizzard is getting bad. Her car stops moving, so she has to pull over and carry the baby to find a nearby inn. At the inn, Joe visits Frankie while she's attending to a customer. It appears the customer is taking their last room. Joe is there to support her, and hopes his dog will be fine before he gets back home. Everyone believes Joe's dog named Donkey is kind of weird, including one of the guests. Meanwhile, Mary sees an inn and she's glad. She goes in and bumps into Joe, who's almost heading out to his house. She meets Frankie at the reception to get a room, but is told all their rooms are fully booked. She sees Natalie, and Mary reveals she just adopted her. Frankie decides to go to extra lengths because of Natalie, so she reaches out to another inn on the phone, but they're all fully booked also. She thinks of a nearby hotel and suggests Joe, who's still around, drive her there. Mary reveals she drove through that same route on her way, and it's blocked. Frankie suggests Mary stay with them, and finally remembers Joe has a guest room, even though his house is a barn. Mary's glad and decides to accept it, since it's her only option. However, Joe hopes she will not be discouraged by his untidy house. Frankie tries assisting Mary with some baby clothing, but she believes it is not necessary, since she will only be there for a night. On getting to Joe's house, he apologizes for his untidy room. Mary sees no need for him to apologize, but is grateful he allows her and Natalie to stay for the night. He introduces her to Donkey, and she likes the name. On seeing his guitar, she wonders if he is a musician, and he reveals he used to play. Natalie cries, and Mary realizes that she needs to get her some drinks and food. Joe assists her in doing so. Surprisingly, Joe's sister joins them with her husband, to give some baby clothing to Mary. She is surprised at their generosity. Joe reveals that her sister is a good person, and she is also adopted. He takes Mary and the baby to their room so they can settle in. Later, Mary joins Joe downstairs, who's on his way to assist people with their cars because of the storm. She needs a nightlight in case Natalie wakes up. He does not have one, but he gives her another kind of light. Mary goes to her room and finds Natalie crying. She carries her, and decides to show her the snow so she can sleep. Eventually, Natalie and Mary get some sleep. Much later, Joe, who's trying to get some rest after a long day, wakes up to the baby's cry. Mary gets her some food, but Natalie continues crying. Joe and Donkey cannot sleep, but he believes it is just for a night. Eventually they doze off when Natalie stops crying, including Mary. The next day, Joe wakes up to his alarm, and hopes it is not the baby crying again. He bumps into Mary in the kitchen. She is having a coffee after a long night. Sean comes visiting, but unknown to him, Joe has a visitor with the baby. He is unable to keep his voice down, and Natalie wakes up crying again. Joe checks on her, allowing Mary to get some rest. He joins them after he gets Natalie to sleep. Sean introduces himself to Mary. Joe explains how he ended up with Mary and the baby. Mary hopes she can get home that day, but Sean reveals that the blizzard will still be harsh for another day, and she is disappointed. Later, they discover that Sean added Natalie's formula to his coffee, and Mary and Joe decide to not let him know. Sean is there to get Joe's help for the Santa truck. Mary wonders what it is, and they reveal that the church displays a Santa truck every Christmas, where he takes pictures with the kids and people drop gifts. It was Joe's mom's idea. They persuade her to join them for the Christmas Eve celebration. In the next scene, Joe takes them to church and introduces Mary and Natalie to his mom. His mom is delighted to meet them. When Joe leaves to greet the others, his mom reveals that he reminds her of Jake, who's his late father, because of how he relates with people. Mary admits that he is a good man, and believes his late father was too. Later, Joe joins them with his grandmother, and he introduces Mary and Natalie to her. 
She assumes they're dating. Joe and Mary reveal that they are just friends, but his grandma believes they will end up together. Joe leaves to meet his sister again, while his mom, grandmother, and Mary get talking. Natalie cries, and his grandmother is surprised to see her baby. Eventually, Joe's grandma suggests she takes Natalie to where the choir is practicing. She believes music will make her stop crying. She decides to pray with her cross necklace as Natalie gets some sleep. Joe joins them, and he reveals his love for music, and how close he was to his late father. He believes in music, and God inspires him. Mary reveals she loved dancing when she was younger, and music and God inspire her too. They both believe in God and his word. Frankie later joins them. After that, Joe tries to assist Mary with her seat belt as they head home. Frankie, his mother and grandmother see them and believe they're destined to be together. They pray it will happen on time. Later that night, Mary gets Natalie to sleep, and she joins Joe in the kitchen. Mary now realizes how difficult it was for her mother to raise her all by herself. Joe believes it is not easy on everyone, and he believes she can do it. They decorate the Christmas tree together. While doing that, he reveals how close he is to his family and the community, and how losing his father made him stop music. His father was the one who taught him how to play. Mary also reveals more about her mom, and how it is difficult to be raised by a single woman. That made her learn how to be independent, and determined to be successful. She mentions her ex-husband, and how things ended between them because she's not fertile. Joe can imagine how hard it must have been hard on her, but she believes it is a blessing. She has decided to lean on God, and it has helped her to stay strong. After the decorations, they marvel at how beautiful the tree is, and realize that they are good as a team. Mary leaves to join Natalie, and they wish each other goodnight, hoping they will get another chance to bond. However, Joe decides to play his usual game, but is not inspired to. So he decides to arrange his house instead. Strange, if I may say. Later, Natalie cries as usual, and Mary tries to get her to stop crying. Joe and Donkey, on the other hand, can sleep because they put on headphones. The next day, Mary wakes up and cannot find Natalie, so she runs downstairs, hoping nothing bad has happened to her. She sees Joe dancing and singing for her. Mary appreciates him and goes to get some more sleep. Later, at the mechanic store, while Joe attends to an old man, Mary joins them with Natalie. After fixing his truck, they suggest he joins them for Christmas, because his family is not in Bethlehem. He declines and advises them to cherish each other. Unknown to him, they're not married. The man mentions that there's nothing more important in life than family. They appreciate him as he leaves. They later go for a walk with Natalie, and Joe decides to show Mary his favorite spot. In the next scene, he shows her his family barn. It is a beautiful view, and Joe explains how his family celebrates Christmas every year. It is a special place, but they will not be able to keep it because taxes have increased. Mary feels bad about the barn situation, and secretly hopes she can do anything to assist them. She appreciates him for bringing her to his special place. Right there, Joe receives a message from Sean revealing that the road has been opened. However, Mary hopes she can get to spend more time with Joe, but she is not sure if he feels the same. In the next scene, Joe joins her as she plans to leave with Natalie. They appreciate one another for being kind and helpful. He wishes she can stay, and wants her to always keep in touch. Unfortunately, she cannot start her car. Could this be a sign? Joe gets her car to his workshop, and discovers that the ignition is faulty. He reveals that he will be able to fix it after Christmas. She suggests getting a cab. Finally, he reveals he wants her to stay, and wishes to show them what their Christmas is like. Mary agrees. Later, in Joe's house, Mary secretly tries to find a solution to his family's barn tax issue. Joe keeps checking on her, and is glad to have them around till Christmas. He joins her, and they discuss advertising his father's business. Joe also assists her in choosing a sweater for Christmas Eve. Frankie and his nephew join them. They are surprised to see his house clean and see him bake cookies. It is a miracle. At the Christmas Eve celebration, Joe and Mary with Natalie join Frankie and some of the people in the community. Frankie believes Mary and Joe are bonding well. She's glad it is happening, and Joe is becoming more responsible. Frankie suggests Mary join their family for dinner later that night. Mary tries to decline because of Natalie, but she persuades her to change her mind, and promises to get her what to wear to the dinner. Later, Mary gets ready for dinner and concludes on how to assist Joe's barn. She receives a call from her mom, and this time around they get along. After the call, she hears her baby cry, and goes to check on Natalie. She sees Joe play guitar after a long time, simply to put Natalie to sleep. She is thrilled. They compliment each other's outfits, and decide to dance before attending the dinner. They keep staring at each other with so much love. They are interrupted by the baby's cry. On getting to the dinner, Joe's mother is delighted to see them. Mary reveals that she's aware of the barn tax liability, and she has found a solution. They will not need to pay tax, because the barn will be a historical structure in their community. Therefore, Jake's memory will be preserved for generations. This surprises them, and they appreciate her for doing that for their family. 
When they all gather around the table for dinner, Frankie prays and appreciates God for the food and all her family. She appreciates God for her pregnancy and for bringing Mary and Natalie to their family. After the grace, they dine and wine joyfully, play games, laugh, and have a good time together as a family. Later, when Mary and Joe are on their way home, she believes his family is special and she had a good time. Mary reveals that he brings out the best in her. Joe is thrilled and they get close to each other. They are about to kiss when Brooke interrupts them. She's already waiting for Joe at his house. Joe discusses this with her, while Mary overhears them. Brooke is surprised to see him change so quickly after their breakup, and wonders what is special about Mary. Joe reveals they are not dating, and apologizes to Brooke for being unresponsive while they were together. Brooke leaves, hurting. Mary joins Joe and she reveals that she will be leaving the next day. He tries to persuade them to stay, because she has a good effect on him. However, she insists on leaving, so he has no choice but to let her go. Mary gets Natalie to sleep, while Joe and Donkey think of how to live without Mary and Natalie in the house. They have gotten used to having them around. The next day, Mary gets ready to leave with a cab, but Frankie tries to convince her to stay. She hopes Joe can make her stay, but he feels there is nothing he can do to stop her. Frankie hugs her, still wishing she could change her mind. Frankie leaves them, and Mary appreciates Joe for being there for her and Natalie. They say goodbye as they hug each other. Up until she enters her cab, Joe hopes she will change her mind. When Joe gets inside his house, he wonders how he will be able to live without them. He sees a necklace cross and thinks of her. Meanwhile, on Mary's way, the cab stops to get gas, and she decides to pray for guidance with her cross, she finds out her cross is missing. She receives a call from her mom and they have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion. Her mom advises her to stop pushing people away. Mary believes this is the guidance she prayed for. She appreciates her mom and invites her over to Bethlehem. At the Christmas Carol in church, the choir sings, and Mary joins them. She searches around for Joe and does not see him. Surprisingly, he joins her later, and he's glad she changed her mind. Mary reveals that there's something there for them in Bethlehem. After Carol, Frankie and everyone are glad she's back. Joe's grandma assists her with Natalie. Mary's mom joins them, and she's glad to see her. She leaves to discuss it with her. Mary apologizes for pushing her away. She reveals her failed marriage makes her believe she is a failure, and she does not know how to accept help from people who love her. Her mom reveals she is proud of her, and never blamed her for anything. Joe joins them with Natalie, and Mary introduces her adopted daughter and hopes she will not judge her. But there's no judgment, because her mom is glad to meet her granddaughter. Mary also introduces Joe as someone special. Her mom is speechless, and glad she has moved on. It is a double blessing. In the next scene, they all visit the barn. Joe's mom reveals how Jake's father started the barn, and how many memories they had there. Surprisingly, Joe decides to sing while he plays his guitar for everyone. Joe's mom welcomes Mary and Natalie to their family, and they take a family photo. Joe wishes to hold Natalie as her father, and Mary believes they need to seal their relationship before he can do that. They do that with a kiss, and just before the photo, wish one another a Merry Christmas. 